right, guys. So, as I was uh, talking about before is, you know, I was going to clean all these cards up. I have already cleaned most of them except for this one. Um, just because of time, I didn't want to film everything because each one of these cards takes me roughly an hour to clean. So I found out during the process of cleaning these that I believe that a, it was in a smoker house because the dust and dirt is very sticky and tacky and brown. So these are extremely hard to clean for me right now. So if you want to see inside of here, you can see how nasty these these are you can see in the side so this right here <laughs> is the remnants <laughs> of one of the ones i just cleaned so it's really gross it gets really dirty um so the tools i'm using today they're pretty basic you can't use the duster on here you can't use an um an air can or an electric uh, um, you know air blower or anything on this because it won't get that sticky dust out um so i'm using rubbing alcohol this was a whole bottle and as you can see i'm almost empty um i got paper towels i got you know lots of q-tips this is the brush i was using so you could kind of see how gross it is so i gotta go clean that out for this next gpu um i'm also using my i fix it toolkit because there is a few specialty screws for these particular gpus so um and something else to note here is you can see some of the staining, the oil staining on the back of the PCB from the thermal pads. Um, I can't get that out, but you'll notice that these cards, you can see that the warranty sticker right here by my thumb, these cards have never been disassembled. So they've never been repasted or anything. So I probably saved the card's life here because these are in pretty rough shape. So let's uh, crack her open. So on some of these GPUs, you will need a nut driver. This is a five and a half millimeter. And that is because right here, there is a bolt right here that connects to the PCB on the back right here. So you will need a Phillips and the nut driver in your hand to get this open. And this is very close. This nut driver doesn't even fit all the time, all the way into here and it's kind of it's kind of really hard to kind of work it a little bit. So to note, when you're working on graphics cards, sometimes these fan cables and things like that are do not stretch that far. So you want to be really careful as well as you never want to pull on these wires because you could pull both plugs out of the PCB and then you will break it. So you just really have to really just work the little sides and wiggle it back and forth and it will eventually come out just like that. Now we need to undo this one right here. Okay, so now we have, this comes off. So this, as you can see right here, you can see a lot of oil from these thermal pads. Um, I've actually chosen to do the step of, I'm actually gonna replace all these because these are so oily. Cause you could see it here on the card itself. You could see, on on all the chips right here how oily it is i can clean up a little bit of the oil but it it's really stained so it's hard to get that up so i don't spend too much time on it i just do the best i can so the next thing we need to take apart is going to be the fan shroud and the cooler um, this is where we're going to need that specialty bit so uh something else that's really nice to have is going to be one of these these magnetic little cups right here you can get them from like harbor freight or amazon for you know five bucks they, they come in really handy to keep all your bolts together so we have all four of the screws holding the shroud off but there's actually two more screws that are also held together by the by the fans in here so you have to go in at an angle a little bit and there's one bolt on this fan as well as one bolt on this fan. And now this should just come right out. So you can obviously see how gross this is. And you can't blow this out. Like if you touch this, 
this is like this is actually sticky like my hands feel sticky right now after touching that so this is really really gross um, so we still need to disassemble the fan blades because the one bolt just separates it from the cooler so there's two more bolts holding in this um, these fans here to the fan shroud so now these should just pop right out now note there is some tape in here um, I've been just using a little bit of like duct tape or electrical tape just to kind of put these back it's really it's really just meant to hold this in place a certain way so um, but to get the fans to get this one because there's not much slack you're gonna have to at least for me in this instant in this video card I actually have to break them off the tape and I, I leave them connected like this and I work it like this this is how I clean them so you could really see just like how gross this is like touching these fan blades one at a time as I clean them my hands start to get like tacky that's just how gross it is in here I mean these things are in really terrible con condition here but they still work in hash so now this I'm gonna go clean this in my garage because I don't want this you know I'm gonna go clean it outside because I don't want all this stuff in my house so um, this is the only piece I clean out in the garage so I'll be right back and I'm gonna go scrub this off um, the only other tool that you don't see on camera here is going to be I use a plastic bristle brush you can use a toothbrush anything plastic you don't want to use metal um, just to scrub this off because you will not get it off by trying to blow it out it won't come out all right guys so I'm back from the garage and you can see it's a lot better and you can actually see through it a little bit it is still like a little dusty dirty so um, now I just wanted to show you because I'm not going to be able to clean everything on video like slowly because it just takes too long. But here you can see this is one that I've cleaned and I cleaned this half and you can see what it looks like. This is the dirty half, right? And this is the clean half. Um, and you can see how bad the fan is on the back side right there compared to this side. So, and you can see all the residue left from, this is just the alcohol just coming off the blades. So you can see how nasty this is. So the best way I found to actually clean this is I got this little brush from a MSI uh, GPU I bought. It's a two-sided bristle brush and I just dunk it in the alcohol here. And then I just, I just kind of go like this over it and I just brush it a little bit. And I don't brush very hard. I don't want to bend any of the fins or anything like that. So I'm just, I'm just brushing over it. And this, this is 99% alcohol. So this stuff's going to dry really, really, really fast. So don't worry about it, you know, staying in here too long. Now, the next thing I want to get into before I just start doing some cleaning is so these are the thermal pads right here and here you know so whenever you're going to do thermal pads you need to make sure that you have the correct thickness there is all different types of thicknesses for these thermal pads fortunately for me all these thermal pads right here are the same thickness so these are one and a half millimeters and i have some you know uh here at the house so i'm going to change them out um after we get all this cleaned up here but you can buy a gauge to to measure the thickness and i'll leave a a link um down below for the tool if you need to measure your thickness but i just got the thickness from evga directly so let's get these uh thermal pads off of here so i have one on this side and they're kind of like almost like gummy almost and as you can see these are really oily so Sometimes these come off really easy. Sometimes they're kind of a pain like this one's being a pain a little bit As you can see my hands are getting super dirty just by cleaning all this stuff And then you can see down below the fins you can see it's all brown right here from all the alcohol soaking down so I need to finish cleaning this fan and the fan housing. I need to clean this uh, This is actually almost like a back plate, but it goes over it goes over the front of the um of the board like this so this is how it would sit would be on here like that so i need to clean this i need to clean the pcb and the gpu die as well as the back of the pcb so stay tuned and now i'm going to clean this up
All right, guys, so there we go. Our fan blades are now clean. Everything else is clean. Back's pretty clean. Like I said, didn't go for perfect. There's a couple little spots in the corner, but this is really, really serviceable here, so. Okay, now that this is all completely clean now, now we're going to reassemble this part and just be, that way we can get this out of the way. So I know from experience that this card actually will assemble this way and that these heat pipes stick out of the side of the card over here. The first thing though I gotta do though is, I did say that you're gonna need a little bit of duct tape. So as you can see, these get taped down. So I just get a little piece and I just put them in there. Okay, now that we have the we have the cooler fully reassembled, we got the fans, all the screws in them. So one thing to note though, just when you guys are working on GPUs and things like that, make sure that you don't over tighten your screws, okay? As soon as they stop, that's it. If you over tighten it, these are very fine screws. Um, you will strip them extremely easily. So as soon as they bottom out, just stop. So now we're just gonna clean the PCB. This one's gonna be pretty easy. There's not really anything here. I just usually take this brush and I'll just kind of get everywhere with it and just kind of get all the dirt. All right guys, so I have all of the cards cleaned over here as well as the motherboard. So the first thing we're gonna do is, is we're gonna put thermal paste on the CPU. As well as you can see, I cleaned all inside of here. This was super gummed up. Um, these are really easy to disassemble. You just unhook them right here on the sides and then this whole plastic piece just comes off and then you just snap it back in. So we're gonna be using our Thermal Grizzly uh, Cryonaut. So they have this nice little kind of like a flat end when it comes out. So that way you, you can evenly spread out the thermal paste. So this is my first time using something like this. Um, so traditionally I have always just done the X. The X uh, kind of marks the spot for me as a, you know, whenever I build computers. So I have never really used one of these tools, these little brushes here. So that looks pretty good to me. So the next thing we're gonna do is, so you, on these you wanna make sure that, you see how this is turned and the arrow's pointing in? You wanna turn all these arrows and point them so that they're pointing out. So they're not, they're not this way, they're this way. So make sure they're all facing that way. And these are, this is the stock Intel cooler you get with usually your Celerons and stuff like that. So all you're gonna do is, is you're just gonna match up these holes. You can match up these pegs to these holes. Just like that. And then you're just gonna press down till you hear the clicks. And I'm going to press myself and make sure that they're firmly in there because this is just laying on the table. But another good way to tell is you will see the black part protruding through the motherboard to let you know that it's this is safely in as well as it's not coming off. So motherboard is successfully done. So now let's get on to our graphics cards. So so like I said before, we decided that we're gonna I'm gonna replace the uh, thermal pads as well as the thermal paste because this was so oily. Um, I did get most of the oil off, but there is some still some staining on there that I just, it's just what it is. So the nice thing about this actual back plate is you could see kind of these cutouts right here, these imprints right here by my finger. It's actually marking where the chips are so you can put down the thermal pads in the correct place. All, all they won't all be that way. Some don't have this plate right here, I notice on newer cards. This is an older card, so, you know, older technology, but, so pretty much 
And when you're doing thermal pads, um, so I already did this card and I wanted to test it to make sure the thermals were good. Um, so this card's fully assembled and done. Now, when you're doing thermal, when you're doing thermal pads, okay, you don't, they don't have to be perfect. Um, so like you could just see, you see this right here and pretty much you want it to at least cover the portion that it's telling you to cover. You don't want to be too short. It's better to have too much because as you can see right here, because this is where these are going to go, there's really nothing else there. So having too, a little too much is perfectly okay, but having too little and not hitting these memory chips will definitely cause you problems for heat. So what I did was, is I kind of just, I'm just gonna kind of gauge. I just say, okay, it's about that wide, you know, and I'm just gonna take my razor knife and I'm just gonna make a cut, just a little cut, just to kind of get me going. So then I kind of take it down the line a little bit. And then what I wanna do is, is I wanna see how far down my line I need to go almost right down here to this point pretty much. So we'll just cut, cut down to the point. And I'm pretty much right, right there where that cut is, is where we need to cut it off at. So we'll just go like this, take that off. Now when you're doing thermal pads, you'll notice that there's plastic on each side. So you just take one piece off you're gonna stick it where you want it, kind of give it a little bit of a press. This stuff's kind of, it's kind of weird, almost almost like Play-Doh, but not quite the same consistency. And then you'll just peel off the other set of plastic. And that that's it. So pretty much just make sure you cover at least the area that you need to cover on your memory chips. Um, another way you could do this is actually, you could just go like this and put it directly on the chips and just make sure that it's gonna to touch. So you could just do that. You could just put them on the memory chips themselves and that's perfectly fine because it's gonna end up the same way. So, um, so yeah, so let me get this one done and then uh, I'll bolt it together and then we'll put the thermal paste on um, and then you guys will we'll get this thing rocking and rolling here. All right, guys, so I got my stack of six done here. Uh, they all have the thermal pads and new thermal paste, as well as we got thermal paste on the CPU cooler here. Um, I want to do a video of how to clean GPUs. So in case you guys are buying used graphics cards, or maybe you want to clean your own graphics cards. So this is a good way to do it. Um, now, if you do have the EVGA GTX 1070s uh, SCs, um, you will need for for the main memory chips it takes one and a half millimeter thickness um, thermal pads and then on the back plate the one that faces up that connects to the cooler is a one millimeter thickness uh, thermal pad so you only need two different sizes for the GTX 1070s so um, you also need a box cutter or something to cut this with I recommend a box knife because it's very sharp and then you'll need, of course, a screwdriver so you could assemble your graphics cards. And then you'll need some good thermal paste. Um, I've already been doing a little bit of testing with this Thermal Grizzly. Um, it's very, very good. I highly recommend this. Um, I'm probably gonna start using this more than I am using Arctic Silver 5. Um, so, all right, guys. So, please like, share, and subscribe. And remember, this is part one the second part, I actually got a brand new frame and I'm going to be building the entire rig from the ground up. So you guys can watch that if you guys are interested in how to build a mining rig. So stay tuned. And remember, this is the Mining King giving you the most hashes and I'll see you next time.